Well, good afternoon and praise the Lord. Amen. Thanks for coming out today to our annual Good Friday service. Um, you know, I, I tried to, I'm trying to be mournful today, wear my black suit and trying to be dark and things like that, but it's hard for me to be mournful. Jesus is alive. And thank God that he did what he did. And you and I have eternal life because of what he did. Amen. And uh, I know today we do remember, and it is a, a day of uh, solemn remembrance, but I have a hard time being solemn. Because <laughs> Jesus is alive. And I'm so glad he's alive making intercession. Right now, as you and I sit here, he's making intercession before the Father for you and I. Praise the Lord. That's a, what an awesome Savior we have. And he did, he did, he paid a debt he did not owe. And I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Because of that, now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Hallelujah. Thank God that Good Friday became a Good Friday because of what Jesus did. We're just glad you're here. I trust you'll meet when you leave. We'll be done in about an hour here. You'll say it was good to be here to remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us and what it also what it purchases. And still it gets, as we say in Dutch land, gooder and gooder. Praise the Lord. Let's just pray. Then we're going to sing a couple songs. Father, we thank you for this day. And we look at it as Good Friday because we know the end of the story. But it wasn't a very Good Friday, the first one for you. It was one that you rather would have not have walked in your flesh, but you knew it was the right thing to do and you did it. And we're so glad you were willing to take care. You were willing to bear the marks on your back, the thorns on your brow, the nails in your hands and feet, the mocking. And when you did it, nothing wrong. It was our sin. It was my sin. Lord, you took it to the cross, and we're forever grateful. May we never forget. May we always remember Good Friday. That first one wasn't good until Sunday. But, Lord, it's good for us. It is Good Friday, and thank you for making it a Good Friday. Thank you for being willing to walk that path of the Via Della Rosa. Thank you for being willing to go to the skull, the, the hill of the skull of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. We, we, like I say, all morning, afternoon long, for the next three hours as we think about you on the cross, just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that we will have a glimpse of you today, even as we partake in communion, remembering what you did. Maybe share it, Lord. Today is important for us to remember, but it's important for us to share it with our children, our children's children, so that nobody will ever forget or take it for granted. Father, bless each one today. May we just get a greater picture of who you are today. May we leave with an understanding we serve a great Savior. We ask it on Jesus' wonderful name, and we all shout it together. Amen. Amen. Well, in just a moment here, we're going to have Daniel's going to lead us in a couple hymns. If you want to stand, you can. If you want to sit, you can sit, whatever. There will be a couple hymns. He's going to lead us. So uh, let's just worship the Lord and remember him as Daniel leads us in some hymns. Page 525, page 525.
page 
Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before you're seated, let's give Jesus a big hand. Praise the Lord. It's well with our soul because of what he did. Amen. Because of who he was. Praise the Lord. Greet somebody this morning, this afternoon. Let them know you're glad to see them remembering and receiving salvation today. Praise the Lord. We can have joy even on Good Friday because of what Jesus did. I trust you can, we sang that song, it is well. I trust you could say that in all honesty. It is well, it is well. And if it's not well with your soul, don't leave here today without making, making it well. Even right now, don't, don't, don't take another breath until you make it well with your soul. Between you and the Lord, amen. It's the greatest thing we can do. That's the most important thing we will do. Praise the Lord. I want to take a moment here and just read crucifixion story here out of the book of Luke 23 through 32 if you want to follow along you can but it's Luke 23 32 through 49 excuse me 32 through 49 two others both criminals were led out to be crucified or executed with him finally they came to a place called the skull all three were crucified there Jesus on the center cross and the two criminals on the other sides Jesus said father forgive those people because they don't know what they are doing and the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched, and the leaders laughed and scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself he's, if he's really God's chosen one, the Messiah. The soldiers mocked him, too, by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A signboard was nailed to the cross above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, so you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God even when you're, when you're dying? We deserve to die for our evil deeds, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Praise the Lord. By this time, it was noon. I realize it may be a little different, but we're in church at noon here, at least our noon anyhow. By this time, it was noon. That's where the focus is on the Lord at this time. And darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the thick veil hanging in the temple was torn apart. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the captain of the Roman soldiers handling the execution saw what had happened, he praised God and said, surely this man was innocent. And when the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw all that had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. So watch a short video. 
go to, we don't need to say goodbye. Praise the Lord. We don't need to say goodbye. It was a very short video. <laughs> and we, we got it now, we got it now. Okay. You need not say goodbye. The people will shout my name. Pilot will tell them there's nothing I've done to deserve this. And they will refuse. Pilate will stand me beside Barabbas, a murderer, and they will choose him over me. Pilate will appeal to the priest, insist on simply whipping me to appease their fury, but they will shout it louder, crucify, crucify. But still, you need not say goodbye. My hands will be tied to a post. The sound of the whip will ring in your ears and in your chest. The soldiers will peel the skin off my back. A ring of thorny branches will be pressed into my scalp until the blood runs into my eyes. Oh, but listen. You need not say goodbye. I will carry that cross. I will go to the place of the skull, and there they will drive the iron stakes between the bones in my wrist with a hammer that will nail my feet into the tree. I will be raised up as the world waits for me to die. Nevertheless, you need not say goodbye. Between two thieves I will hang. You may hear me speaking to my father, your father. You may hear me ask him, why? But child, you need not say goodbye. What you won't see, what you won't hear, what you won't know until all of this is done is that in that moment, I was paying the penalty of your wrongdoing, every wrongdoing, every mistake, Every act of envy, every word of hatred, every moment of violence and greed and spite, every selfish desire, every lustful thought, every moment of weakness and weariness, all the failures of human history will be in my hands and on my head. On that cross, I will suffer the wrath that was destined for you. Every guilty verdict fallen on me. Your punishment will be paid for in my blood and it will be enough. I will die on your cross. I will let out a final sigh. Know that I have loved you and you need not say goodbye. But if you must, if you absolutely must say the word goodbye, then say it like this. Goodbye fear. Goodbye sorrow. Goodbye rejection. Goodbye shame. Say it like this. Goodbye guilt. Goodbye condemnation. Goodbye all the regrets of the past. Look up at the cross and speak the words. Goodbye addiction. Goodbye chains. Goodbye hopelessness. Right here in this place, say it aloud. Goodbye captivity. Hello freedom. Goodbye loneliness. Hello belonging. Goodbye defeat. Hello victory. This is the end of the curse. 
This is the demise of the serpent. This is all debts paid. This is, it is finished. Goodbye, all the powers of hell. Goodbye, darkness. Goodbye, dread. Goodbye, every sin. Go ahead and say it. Goodbye, death. Speak and be free. But don't say goodbye to me. Yes, you'll see them put the spear in my side. But remember, it's only Friday. So you need not say goodbye. Praise the Lord. Amen. We say goodbye to all the negativity and say hello to freedom, to peace, joy. Praise the Lord. I like what he said. I like what he said in there. He died on not his cross. He died on our cross. That was really, I don't know if that, that hit me between the eyes. He died on my cross, not his cross. And you go in there, it wasn't snuck in there, but you don't think about that. It was my cross. He would, we would say it was Jesus' cross. No, that was my cross. Je Jesus was made sin for us. He just didn't bear my sin. He was made sin for you and I. That's how, this, this is so deep. That's why he had to be tortured and punished. He became sin, though. The songwriter says, who knew no sin, takes it out of this verse, so that we might become his righteousness. He was made, he was made, he just didn't bear our sins. He was made sin to be sin for us, who knew no sin. He knew no sin. He didn't have sin anywhere. He, he was blameless, perfect. That we might, that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Do you realize he wants you and I to be the righteousness of God in him, in Christ Jesus? He was made sin. That's one of the things I always used to think, Lord, why did you suffer so long? Why did you, you know, it could have been a five-minute thing. You know, take a few stripes quickly, get, get it done with, just die. Why did you even try just die quickly? And so on. But the Lord took me back to this verse and said, Dan, I just didn't take your sins to the cross. I was sin. Every part of my body. That shows us how ugly sin is. Sin, what has happened in society, society, we, 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 we make sin, well, that's not that bad. We put it in categories. Sin separates, and sin is ugly. Jesus was brutalized from the top of his head with the crown all the way to the nails in his feet. The Bible says he, we couldn't even, he couldn't even be recognized as a man. The Passion, remember a few years ago when, I can't think of the guy's name who put it out, the movie star. Well, no, Gibson, that's it. That's about as close as you'll see somebody today uh, trying to look like the way he probably did back then, but even it was even worse than that. You couldn't recognize him. He was bruised from his head to his toes because he was sin. He just wasn't carrying, if he was carrying on his back, just whip his back, done. He became sin who knew no sin. He had to be brutalized. It had to have spears in his side. There had to be inside, outside, upside down. And, and, and there was no way that he, because my sin is that ugly. So we should never, ever, ever make an excuse for sin. Because your sin, my sin is that ugly. It, it took Jesus. He had to become sin for me. He had to be brutalized because of my sin. That cross had to be made for me, which he, he went on and said, let him go free. I'll take it for him. That's why it took so long. Every part of him had to be. The scriptures had to be fulfilled. It had to be. He was sin. So don't ever think for a moment when we think, you know, uh, uh, that sin, you know, that we laugh at sin or we wink at sin or it's not a hill worth dying on. Sin is ugly. Hell is horrible. Understand, hell is horrible. Hell is a terrible place to be. And that's why Jesus was willing. First, my sin is that ugly he had to be. Then secondly, he was willing to take my spot because he knew hell was that horrible. You and I have an idea what hell is like, but we have no real idea how horrible it is. Jesus knows how horrible hell is. So he said, I don't want anybody to go there. So I'm willing to become sin. I'm willing to become sin, to have my father forsake me, to have my father, because God can't look on sin, to turn his back on me, and then for me to be brutalized, to be mocked, and so on, so that no one has to go to hell. 
There's not a person on this earth that has to go to hell. Jesus paid it all. All I got to do is say, have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. I don't know why anybody in the world would not take that offer. I don't know why anybody balks at receiving Christ. I don't know why. What an offer. I mean, he, he requires basically nothing for you to say, Lord, I believe in you, and I desire to receive that and to spend eternity with you and forgive me. It's easy. It's not difficult. And yet people balk at that. People, you know, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I think sometimes we put, we put requisites on, but God doesn't. He paid it all. Trust his son, Jesus. Hell is horrible. Hell is ugly. But God is always good. Remember that. God is always good. It's important so that here's what I want to say as I bring this kind of to a close. I want to read Psalm 73. Whenever we think in life, it's not fair, God, what's happening to me. I don't get this, Lord. Don't you care that I'm here? Or don't you know that I'm here? Or don't you care for me? You know, we all have moments that, you know, our faith is tested. And we wonder, where is God? Doesn't he care? Doesn't he know? Uh, this isn't fair. This person's whatever, so on. Always remember Good Friday. Always remember Good Friday. What my sin, what your sin did, God is good all the time. If Jesus did nothing else, he does plenty more for all of us, but if he did nothing else for me or for you, for any of us, what he did on that bad Friday that became Good Friday two, a couple of days, a few days later, what he did for us would be more than enough. He took that so you and I would not have to, our sins can be forgiven. We don't have to continue to do all kinds of sacrifices and so on. And we, and we don't have to spend eternity in the devil's house. It was made for the devil and his angels, not for you and I. Thank God because of Jesus. And then I want to encourage us to go back and read a psalm, Psalm 73. If you're having a bad day where you think that, oh, I don't, you know, we all have a bad day. You know, we all have, you know, things come against us at times and, and we wonder where, why is, you know, why this or why that? I know you did this on Calvary, but why can't you do something for me today? I want us to see what the writer of Psalms says. It wasn't David, it was Asaph. In Psalm 73, I want to read the whole psalm to you because it's a powerful psalm. It was the Old Testament, Old Testament rendering of when we doubt in the New Testament where we live today. This is the answer for any kind of doubt, any kind of fear, any kind of jealousy, any kind of envy. Because look what, look what the writer said here in Psalm 73. Truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, but as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. That's a Christian writing this. A Christian as keeper follower of the law, and so we call him a Christian today. For I was for I envied the proud. He was jealous of prideful people. When I saw them prosper, I life's not fair. Why is that guy across the road? He's doing better than I am, and he's wicked or whatever. He doesn't love God. This is where he was. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies seem so healthy and they're so strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. <clears throat> These fat cats, I like that. These fat cats have everything. Their hearts, uh, their, uh, everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. In their pride, they seek to crush others. They boast against the very heavens, and the words and their words they strut throughout the earth. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. He was one of them. And what does God know? They ask. Does the Most High even know what's happening? Does He care? Does He know all that kind of stuff? Look at these wicked people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I got nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If, if I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. That's what Good Friday's about. I'm going to talk about it in a minute here. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. But what a difficult task it is. Then I went in, then... Here's where we are today. Then I went into your sanctuary. We're in his sanctuary. I mean, I realize we're his sanctuary. We're the temple, but also this is also his sanctuary too. Then I went into your sanctuary, oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery slope and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O oh Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. 
Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was torn up and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you with all these questions and doubting you and so on and going through all that. Yet, in other words, you still put up with me is what it boils down to. Yet I still belong to you and you still hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My, my health may fail. My, my spirit may even grow weak. But God, but God remains the strength of what? My heart. He is mine. He is yours. He is ours forever. Praise the Lord. Those who desert him will perish. For you destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter. And I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. Hallelujah. That's what Good Friday's about. That's what communion's about. Always to get us back. Because, you know, here's a great writer of, of Scripture. And he got out of whack. He almost lost his faith, is what he's saying there. Getting all out of whack because of life. and so on. But, but he had to come to the sanctuary, to come to service, to finally see, oh, God, you are so good to Israel, your people. You're so good to me. I must have seemed like a crazy man with all my questions I had, my doubts and my faith. But God, you still held my hand, even when I doubted. Even when I was mad, upset, where are you? And so on. But now I can see the end of the wicked it happens that quick. But Lord, for us, it gets better. You see, God's bad Friday turns into a good Friday for us. And because of a good Friday, you and I have a good life here and we have a great life thereafter. Amen. Understand, we have, we're going to live abundantly and we're going to have abundant life. Amen. Because of what he did for you and I. Now, in just a moment, we're going to receive communion. But I want to throw something out to you here. Juan's going to come and just lead us in, in communion here. If you didn't get a cup, just raise your hand, Daryl, or somebody will make sure that you get a, a cup here. But I want us to remember, whenever we're questioning, just like the psalmist did there, and we're doubting, remember Good Friday. Remember what he went through, the hell, he literally went through hell, more than hell on earth, for you and I, so that we could be his righteousness. I mean, think about that. I know people say, oh, I'm righteous. Yeah, you're righteous in him. Remember, this, the writer says, will be his righteousness in Christ Jesus concerning us. I'm no, I, there's nothing righteous in me except Jesus. And because of Jesus, I'm righteous before the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. The Father can commune with me. The Father can have relations with me because of Jesus. And so don't ever forget that. But here's the thing. Today, we're going to receive communion as Juan's going to lead us in just a moment. And uh, Maddie's going to lead us in a song, nothing, What Can Wash Away Our Sins, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. And then we'll sing another a chorus after the communion, and we'll pray, and we'll bring it to a close. But we all know this, many communion tables, now this one doesn't have it written on, most communion tables will have it written on, do this in remembrance of me. And we know that the first priority, the reason why we do this, we do it in remembrance of him, because God knows we have short memories. Think about the Israelites. God did so many wonderful things for the miracles, but it would be a, a few short days, a few years, and they'd be out worshiping the golden calf again, worshiping idols and doing all kinds of wrong things. And, God's scratching his head. These are my people. And I just delivered them. In three years, five years, they're out serving another God again. And he had to always try to bring them back to himself, calling them back. You and I, that's why Good Friday, it's good to have a service every Good Friday to remember. Because we have short memories. You know, life can seem hard and life can seem long and life can seem difficult. And we can look at the, the wicked who are prospering at times. We can go, oh, like this psalmist did. Oh, what's going on? God, don't you see me? Did I waste my time serving you? And so on and so forth. The answer, no, you did not. But it can seem that way in that moment. And God wants us to do it in remembrance of him. However, here's the part that's very rarely spoken of. This is the part I want to get us to here. If you're here, whether you've been saved for 80 years, 90 years, or whether you've been saved recently, or maybe you're here today and you're not born again, you're not saved, don't receive this communion until you receive Christ. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. The first priority, Jesus said, is remember me. But he also knew that the Apostle Paul he was going to inspire the Apostle Paul to write about communion. And the second priority in communion is, first we remember him. That's Jesus' words, we remember him. But he, the Apostle Paul said, before you take this, make sure you examine yourself. Again, it goes back to short memories. A lot of people, because they receive Christ, they think they can go live like hell and be okay. You can't do it. We have short memories. We're like the children of Israel. We serve God one day, and another year later, we're out doing sinful things. 
And God says, that doesn't work in my kingdom. Paul said, examine yourself. And Paul said, nobody likes to talk about this, but Paul said, many die prematurely. You drink and eat damnation to yourself. We don't do this just because it's part of our ritual or part of what we do as Christians. We do it because Jesus said it, number one, and the apostle Paul added priority two. This is the time to examine yourself. And Lord, if I've committed sins, if I've just not been the person I, I claim to be this past month or week since you've had communion last, forgive me. And he will. Lord, maybe you committed my heart for, sin, for real. Maybe before it was fake and phony, I was drinking, eating damnation to myself. Now, I don't know what that damnation means, but it's not good. When Christ said, when the apostle said, you drink damnation to yourself and eat, that's not cool. And even said it, it tied in with the fact that some die prematurely because they're not, they're not discerning, discerning the Lord's body. That we just take it by rote. We just think, oh, this is just part of what we do. This is very, very reverent. This is very holy. Not this in my hand, but what it represents. It's very holy and very sacred. And it shouldn't be something that we just do just because we do it. And it's right, okay, now I'm okay. I took communion. No, 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 no. You were either right before you took communion or you're not right. Communion does not make you right. You're asking the examining yourself beforehand makes you right. This just shows why I'm right, what he did. Now, I realize many of us here have been saved for a long time. And I don't take a long time to explain communion, but I wanted to today. Because as one comes to lead us in whatever he feels to read today and so on, I know I've taken a little bit of time here, whatever he feels to share. I want us to take this reverently, sacredly, discreetly and making sure we have done what we need to do. I'm not asking you to join a church, but I'm asking you to remember and uh, to discern the Lord's body. One, come. If you would just come. Maddie, lead us, in that, lead us in that great hymn, What Can Wash Away Our Sins, Nothing But the Blood. And after we sing that, feel free to lead us in however you want to.
Jesus is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, no, nothing but the blood of Jesus. on a day like today we remember our Lord Jesus Christ how he died for us but the day before he was put to death our Lord Jesus Christ remembered us the gospel tells us he ate with his, with his disciples and he broke bread and passed it and said take this all of you and eat this symbolizes my broken body given up for you do this in remembrance of me. So if we all take the bread, let's eat it together. So when supper ended, he grabbed the cup, passed it around again, and told his disciples, drink this, all of you. It symbolizes my blood of the new and everlasting covenant which will be shed for you and all mankind. That's where he remembered us. He said all mankind. Not just the present that was with him but us as well in future. So as we remember him let's all drink together. Thank you Father. seated for just a moment. We're going to sing Jesus Paid It All in just a moment, just the chorus part. But I want to just, as we take in communion now, remember when we leave this place today, anytime that sin comes knocking at your door, may, may the computer of your mind quickly cloud the painted picture in the theater of your, of your mind. May the picture of Jesus being brutalized come across your mind. I'm not going to sell my soul for a bowl of pottage. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put. Make him think that he did it for nothing. That he did it. He took. He took my sin and became my sin. He became my sin for nothing. I'm not doing that to Jesus. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna follow Jesus. And then when all of a sudden, you know, if you're in that, I need you to see when all of a sudden you're seeing people that are seem to be doing better than you and seem to be getting away with their their sin or they're getting away with their wickedness, as the psalmist wrote. Just get a picture, a glimpse, just one second of hell. And see, that's their destination unless they change. And then, then also, let your, your, your computer of your mind, cloud, cloud the painted picture in the theater of your mind. May you get a picture of heaven. How gorgeous it is. That's my destination. That's your destination. That's our destination. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let that, let that drive you and keep you from that sin, keep you from that doubt, keep you from that uh, faithlessness and so on. And give God glory and praise and keep that walk straight. Jesus, those who love me will stay on the narrow road, straight and narrow. They'll walk straight. They won't this way and go back and so so forth and so on. We do that by clouding the painted pictures in the theater of our mind. And we have to quickly do that. When Satan brings that thought along, when Satan brings that sin along, no, not gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to have him beat again. Uh -uh, he, he did it once for all for me. Not gonna, I'm not going to have him feel like he did it like he did it for nothing. I'm also not going to give Satan one moment of pleasure thinking he's got one more. No, no, you lost one and you're going to lose many more. Because I'm, I'm bound for heaven. Amen. Are you glad Jesus paid it all? Are you glad he made it possible for you and I to spend eternity with him and with one another? Amen. Praise the Lord. We have great things to look forward to. We really do because of Good Friday. Jesus made Good Friday good because he was willing to walk that walk. Thank God for Jesus. Let's just stand one more time. Let's just sing this chorus a time or two. Jesus paid it all, then I'll close this in prayer. Praise the Lord. Jesus paid it all.
we thank you, Jesus. We're so glad we had that stain of sin in our life. And even as we remember right now, a couple thousand years ago, we were on your mind. We were on your mind. Humanity, all of humanity was on your mind when you went to the cross. When you withstood those cruel beatings, the mocking news, and the list goes on and goes on. All the horrible, horrible atrocities, the things that were done to you and said about you, the lies, the gambling, the, the mocking, the scourging and stuff. Lord, we can't even imagine it. And even when we portray it on a screen, it does nothing really to compare to what it was like. At the same way, what you have prepared for us is nothing like we've seen before. We can't even imagine your word says what you have prepared for us who love you and are looking for your return. So Lord, we rejoice today. Yes, we solemnly remember and we don't ever want to take for granted what you did for us. Lord, and we want to pass this on to our children's children. Lord, we don't want to forget it ourselves, of course. But God, we want our children, our children's children and our neighbors and our co-workers and just the list goes on of people. We want them to know, that's what the psalmist said, therefore I will tell others of what you've done. Therefore, I will tell others, when we leave this place, may we go, as we sing at Christmas time, may we go tell it on the mountain that Jesus is born. But also, may we go tell it, so to speak, in the mountain and the valley, that Jesus rose from the dead. And we have salvation because of that. May we go and tell it, and live it, and become your righteousness through Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for what it means for all of humanity. And Lord, I pray that all of humanity will bow the knee of their heart and will receive the greatest gift you gave to all of humanity is salvation. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We can't even say it enough. That's why, that's why your word says it's true. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your name is to be glorified, to be praised, to be lifted up. We could do it all day and it wouldn't matter because Lord, what you've prepared for us goes beyond what we can even imagine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless each one, I pray here, Lord. Be with each one. May we have a, a glorious, glorious resurrection weekend here. May we come together on Sunday, whether it's at 9 o'clock here, 11 o'clock here, or if it's somewhere else that, that we need to be. But Lord, may we celebrate. May we celebrate the risen Savior, the risen Christ. May there be just tears of joy, Lord. May there just be laughter. May there be praise. God, may there just be celebration that Jesus, you walked out of that tomb so that you and I, so everybody here can walk out of the tomb of our sin the tomb of our death that was binding us. You bring freedom, deliverance to the captive, salvation to those who need it, Lord, wholeness to those who are not whole. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to walk in darkness anymore. We walk in your marvelous light. Bless each one, I pray. Thank you for this afternoon. We'll give you all the praise and glory. And we ask it all in our wonderful Savior's name. And we all shout it together. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. And remember, Sunday, Sun, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And we want to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. If you need a place to go or want a place to go, I want something different. We'll be here at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Love to have you on Sunday. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.